Congratulations. This is a brilliant work, and I'm so thrilled to see women represented in so many different ways in such an authentic way. Um, I'm going to have you each go down the line. We'll start in the front and then go to you three in the back. Have you each say your name and your role with the show, either in it or on it, as the case may be. Well, I'm Susan Miller, and I am the lucky one who gets to have these fabulous women in my play. Yes, I'm the playwright. Hi, I'm Emily Mann. I'm the director, and I am the lucky one who gets to work with all these fabulous women. <laughs> I'm Polly Draper, and I'm a lucky actress that gets to be in the play. <laughs> and Your I'm character sure is my Danny. Ca my yeah. character is called Danny, and she's a photographer that is taking pictures of these women once a year, every year since they first met 40 years ago in jail. <laughs> Great. So. Uh, Catherine, why don't you I'm Catherine Grody, and I play Gabby, who is a veterinarian, which makes my children laugh because I'm really not an animal lover. I'm an animal respecter, but. <laughs> and I'm very lucky to be with all these people, and I've actually known the playwright Susan Miller 45 years. Wow. Oh, I Hi, I'm Fran Dorn. I play Mac, who's a journalist which is amusing because I don't write anything, <laughs> including grocery lists. I should have been the vet. <laughs> yeah. but, uh, it's I almost like you guys are acting. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> almost, but not quite. Yes, and very happy to be in this production. Hi, I'm Ellen Parker, and I play Syl. I am a real estate person, and um, I, I just love being in this company with these wonderful women, with Emily and in Susan's wonderful play. I love how much you guys all love each other. I don't think that I've ever had a series of introductions that included the word like lucky and love. And, you know, you guys really do seem to be uh, a, a little bit of a family. It certainly felt like it on stage, but sometimes off stage, that isn't the dynamic. Um, is that gender specific, do you think? Or do you think it's just because you guys are all such amazing human beings? Oh, of oh, course. Because that. we're all amazing yeah. human we're beings. Amazing. Yeah. I, I, I started the chain of lucky. And I, you know, we could have used other words um, because the, I, I think it's just also that we've, we all have these layers of experience, not just professionally in theater, but, but, but as humans uh, at a certain point in our lives, which you know, the, the, the play addresses, but also, you know, we are in that, mm -hmm. you know, as contem and contemporary um, women who are still here. You're also, you mentioned your experience. Yeah. I think that that's one issue that I sometimes take with the word lucky is that it can eliminate the effort and how mm -hmm. hard you've worked to cultivate the relationships that you have, the work that you're doing, uh, the messages that you want to present with this play. So I would like to acknowledge all of you for the fact that this was not by chance, that it's clear that this is a, a labor of love that has led to perhaps fortune, fortunate circumstances that are not an accident. Yeah, well, that's, that's great. Thank you for that. Really yeah. Nice. Yeah, 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 you're welcome. Absolutely right. Um, let's start with the character of Sylvia Sill. Um, she is dealing very uh, openly with one of the major issues of women, time, and age, which is does she keep the face she's got, or does she make some little tweaks here and there? Well, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, I think she feels very pressured by the, the way the world has been, the circumstances she finds herself in now in her life, to do something. And, uh, and it's, a, it's a thinking about what do I do? How do I take charge of it? How do I be responsible to myself? How do I do the best thing I can for me, who I am? And it's different from what it is for everybody else. Mm -hmm. But um, I'm not going to say too much more about it, except that. But I think okay. each one of these women is, mm -hmm. is grappling with a, a specific challenge that I think we can all recognize in ourselves, regardless of gender and maybe regardless of age as well. Mm -hmm. um, in, in your case, Fran, your character is a journalist who's dealing with new technology that, that may be well, you, can you talk about those circumstances? Well, you know, it's interesting because um, I, I don't live in New York. <laughs> what a surprise. Uh, Where do you I live? I live in Austin, Texas. Oh, right. You're uh, a professor. I am, yes. In addition to being an actor. All of those things. Um, but I noticed when the Austin American Statesman uh, got smaller and then it started being printed somewhere else mm. so that we're getting the news a day and a half late in the printed 
uh, realm. And of course, pretty soon it won't be there at all. I still get, I get all the New York Times, the Washington Post, and the Austin American Statesman online now. Mm -hmm. So, um, and do I pay attention to the bylines as much as I used to? Not so much. Mm -hmm. So it's, um, it's already happening, right. and she's suffering from it. Catherine, your character's uh, dilemma goes back to a personal relationship and what happens as a couple ages together. Yeah, I think um, it's, it's a very strange place to be where I keep saying my husband and I have been married for almost 40 years, and I keep saying, this is as young as we're ever going to be, mm. you know, and, but you are much more aware of time and how you use it or how you waste it, or this rumor that it's someday going to end is actually <laughs> more than that, and, um, uh, and it's surprising. I think for baby boomer people, you know, who coined don't trust anybody over 30, it, it's really surprising to find yourself quite a bit over 30 and dealing with how you respect yourself, how you keep yourself curious and alive, and, mm -hmm. and how you are seen, you know? I started wearing these things when I turned 65, and my son said, doesn't it bother you that you make noise everywhere you go? <laughs> and I thought, well, that's interesting. Maybe I've started doing that, because now that I'm invisible, you may not see me with my white hair, but you can <laughs> hear me coming through. Yeah. yeah, never apologize for making noise, ladies. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and Polly, uh, your character, the, the central issue seems to be about gener generational divide. Um, yours is the only character who uh, has relationships with people aside from these women who we actually get to meet, a son and a mother. Yeah. Um, and I think that, can you just talk about those two relationships as they show up in the show? Yeah, I think that, um, that she is at a crossroads um, she's she's sort of celebrating life in all of its forms, and I think she's just been chosen to have a retrospective done at MoMA of all of her photography, my character, and she's very excited about that, especially because the the um, retrospective is showing the different stages of these women's lives every single year. And um, and I think that puts her in mind of um, of aging and and the and and the importance of it and the the meaning of it. And so she specifically is thinking about her mother who has uh, Alzheimer's, um, because her mother, who she loves deeply she doesn't consider to be a different person. She considers her just to be more uh, a, another version of the same person. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that's how she sees aging, is it's this beautiful thing that's another version of who you have always been. And she loves seeing the she loves seeing the, the build from one to another. What's the, there's a line that you say to the actor who plays your son about when you walk in the room, you're... Oh, yeah. You're, maybe I should be asking you're the You're not playwright. a different person. You're just more of a person. You're the you, the yeah. five-year-old version the of yourself five -year -old, and the teenage the 15, version of They're all there. Mm -hmm. Just... just uh, I, and I get to have you. So I think she, she relishes the changes that people have. I don't think she sees them as negatives. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where the adversarial relationship between Syl and and my character happens yeah. because yeah. Syl wants to change her face and I see her face as part of the beauty of she she loves the idea that you can wear different um, parts of your life on your face. Oh, beautifully said. There's, yeah. there's also one other thing I I, I love too, because um, it is an intergenerational play. It really is. Um, and the generations that we have lived through uh, are still with us. But there's one point when Mac, in the middle of the afternoon, realizes she's old. And she Mac says, is Fran's character. I'm sorry, Fran, where are you? <laughs> okay. So, uh, and she says, well, I, I don't know how to be an old woman. And then Gabby says, well, do you think a 20-year-old knows how to be 20? Mm -hmm. and, and I think that's it, because we, we're always <laughs> transitioning from one to the next and carrying it all with us. 
Is there a reason that you chose names like Mac and Danny and Syl that are gender nonspecific? Um, oh. Can I call my shrink for now? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know, not, not consciously. I, I love the names. They fit, seem to fit the characters. You know, I, that's important to me. And I could hear them call one another that. And also part of it is that what would they call each other having known each other for a long time? Mm -hmm. You know, not maybe full names. So you can also imagine. But I don't think people do imagine other names. I'm hoping that these are the names that will just stick with you. Yeah. Uh, right. Not as abbreviations. Right. Yeah. 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 Um, Amy, can you... I, I'm. Emily. I bet you get that all the time. Oh, right. <laughs> I like the name Amy, it's, actually. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Emily, uh, can you talk about um, the, the way that you as a director encourage the interpersonal relationships between your actors and how that informs the interpersonal relationships we see on stage? Well, I guess that's how I direct. Yoga. Um, yeah. Yoga is huge. <laughs> yoga. She does you yoga. Yes. yoga. Every, every, we start every the rehearsal. day, at the start of rehearsal, I do a 28-minute practice with the actors. I do that with every show, and I've been doing it for 17 years. And I find that a company that breathes together stays together. <laughs> <laughs> but you, do, you just calm down. The meditation works, and I find that that's a, a great uh, enhancer of building a company. But also, I'm a collaborative director. I love finding out what's going on inside the actors. I, I, there's a reason um, that Susan and I, and, and certainly I, chose the women that are up here. They're smart. I want them to bring all that they are as human beings, all that they've lived through to the roles. I want to hear it. I want to challenge them. I want to challenge them to go places they've never gone before. And I also want to hear them challenge me on everything. And so I guess, in which they do. These are not exact, these are difficult women. Oh, great, and good. just the kind of difficult I love. So, um, yeah, I, I believe in it. And it also builds how the chemistry works between people on a stage mm -hmm. when they have had the chance to really fully find it within themselves and to talk about it with each other. Catherine, and that's so, how it works. Ca oh, my God. To, you're I, shaking I, your head. I, can I tell just you cannot tell say. you how rare this is. Yeah. Rare. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, to have a director that is experienced and confident in that, knowledge that is not threatened by her actors' ideas, opinions, feelings. It is really like you've died and gone to theatrical heaven, guys. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Great. it really Great. is very rare. I think I've had one other experience like that in a very long time of doing that, you know? And, it, and actually, it wasn't as collaborative. It, it, it's really rare, and it really makes you feel permission and not scared and not negative because you don't have to do that whole thing of, well, I would love to tell her this. Yeah. But I can't. <laughs> Poor Emily gets told everything. everything. And it sounds like I love the idea of being the exact kind of difficult you love. Uh, love. <laughs> Only we could all be encouraged in every area of our lives to be loved and difficult at the same time. But you know I, I've been doing this for 40 years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and I think because I have gone around the block so many times and with so many different kinds of actors and so many different kinds of plays um, that I'm not threatened. I am yeah. stimulated. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm still doing it, because yeah. I'm constantly stimulated. Yeah. Also, one of the things about uh, the characters in the play that I wanted very much to show people, uh, I didn't want to fall into any any um, old traps. I wanted you to see singular, you know, individual, idiosyncratic women who are, are still vital mm -hmm. and come into the play with their own, um, you know, career situations, fam like you said, family situations. But to show women um, in a light maybe that they aren't ever seen, that, you know, they, they, they fight. I don't mean fight like brawl. They disagree and they... They, you know, are trying to meet the moment, this current moment, and all of the challenges there are in it. Um, uh, they are still very much here. And they're and substantial present. women. Mm -hmm. They are w w women that you 
you take seriously, even though there's a lot of humor in the play, no one in this play is less intelligent than each one of these women on the stage. Well, there's a reason it's called 20th Century Blues and not 20th Century Giggle Fest. <laughs> Thank you. But it is, a, it is a comedy. It's also very funny. Yeah, it's very funny, but it, it's, it uses humor to address the real world concerns that I think humans in general are dealing with right now. And when you say in the present moment, you mean it. Like, this is a post- election. <laughs> this is a current era. I mean, you make reference to a, an event in 2016 that yeah. I yes. prefer not to mention. <laughs> but, you know, this is happening yeah. right now. Right yeah. now. Yeah. How, are you, I know the show is still technically in previews. Um, your opening is a week away, about? A week and a half. Um, mm -hmm. Are you still making any changes to it? Is it... Is it <laughs> <laughs> yes. Emily is laughing. Yeah. Someone should answer that. Are we yeah. still making changes <laughs> to that? Why don't you? I don't, I don't have don't any. <laughs> <laughs> I will look to my director and my playwright for the answer. <laughs> um, anybody else want to... Uh, uh, I, I, yeah. I can ask a... a, a follow-up question, which is that um, last night when I saw it, it was apparently the first time it's been done in one act instead of Correct. two, That's which right. indicates Correct. to me that yes. it is still getting tweaked. Yeah. Yeah. You learn I, yes. a lot it, from an audience. Mm -hmm. you, you, there are th certain things you cannot do until you hear from the audience, mm -hmm. and a lot of that has to do with timing. Basically, the theater's about time. Mm -hmm. And if you have a moment that really should be one moment and it's five, you hear that from an audience. You can tell and how they're, you've got them or you don't have them. Similarly, you know, we're doing tweaks and trims and focusing, and in all of that, we found that one arc. Mm -hmm. And so I love that. But it took a lot of guts to go out in front of an audience. These women are awesome, as is this woman to my left, mm. and you know, actually said, okay, let's go for it. Let's try it and find out what we're gonna learn. And we can only learn when you guys are experiencing yeah. it with us. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the, the last permission. Night, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, go yeah. ahead. Uh, well, last night we had some changes and, and putting things together. And on all the changes, we were perfect and spot on. But on, on the stuff that we never, ever screw up on, <laughs> I jumped a cue, which caused a whole domino effect where, where everybody started just trying to throw in lines, improv lines that might get someone back on track to make it all. And uh, it, so it, it's, you know, we, we're very interdependent. And if Absolutely. one goes down, the rest of us just go like dominoes. Yeah. <laughs> well, you could also look at it as when one goes down, everyone springs into action to That's save true. each other. Yeah. To Thank you. Right. Each other. Yeah. But, yeah. but of course, we're of that age where we're not springing quite as fast <laughs> as we used oh, to. Give yourself some credit. <laughs> what you are Precarious. is, is yes. seasoned professionals who know what you're doing. Yeah, so. exactly. yeah. But what, what I love are the uh, words they come up with to fill in the spaces. Yeah. <laughs> they're not always. They're not always. Do you do you do you love them. Yeah. Do you, Are you really keeping love a list? Them? Uh, so you make I should. <laughs> well, being on stage is what's that word? A little precarious, always. Yeah. Yep. Um, I, you know, I, it's funny because I, I think there's this. This is not the first time that four female friends have been seen talking about their lives in a, in a pop culture way. Um, I think of everything from girls, Sex and the City, the Golden Girls, and I, I think there's something special about four women of different uh, backgrounds or different sort of life experiences who get together to share. What do you think it is about that that is so attractive to an audience and to a, a creator? Uh, perhaps it's the willingness to share. I'm not sure that, I, and I'm going to make some gross generalization here. I will apologize ahead of time. Uh, I'm not sure that most men spend a lot of time talking to each other about what they're feeling mm -hmm. and what they're thinking about, and uh, it becomes a bit more removed. Whereas women, I think, spend a great deal of time talking about what is happening in their lives on any given day. So it's an easier transition for us, I think. I think maybe my favorite element of this play is the fact that you, Susan, have somehow, you found, because these are women who have known each other 40 years, but 
only see each other once a year. They simultaneously know each other intimately and also still have a lot of catching up to do, which means that there are none of those moments that feel like exposition for the point of exposition. Like they really do have to let each other know, here's what is going on with me and maybe here's something you never knew about me, but you also allow them to have been in each other's lives through basically every major change that they've gone through. And that is this, I would have probably called it an impossible dichotomy. How do you get women who know each other so well and yet still have so much to learn about each other? Mm-hmm. So I want to congratulate you on well, finding that well, in. Thank you, because that, that is here. an amazing challenge, but it's also the fun of this. Mm-hmm. Once I found the world of this play and the sort of hook for, for where I was going to go with it, um, that became really um, a joy to figure out, mm-hmm. you know, um, and and I believe them. I believe them, too. Uh, we have time for a few questions from the audience. Hi. Um, so I was wondering, for the actresses, like, um, what did you all take away from playing your respective characters? Who wants to start? Um, I'll say one thing. Um, I have a... M- in real life, have a mother who has Parkinson's disease and she's going into a phase of dementia. And one of the things that Susan says in her play is that she's, she's, what I've mentioned before, she still feels her mother is all of the same thing she was. And that's, that was a hard concept for me to get behind because I, my mother was so smart and sharp and had was always listening and attentive and knew everything that was going on in the room, no matter how sick she was. So um, the idea that I could I could have permission to think of her as still the same person in a different phase was a nice a nice thing. Yeah. Also, I learned how to hold a camera because I'm supposed to be a <laughs> photographer. <laughs> and I, I didn't know that you're supposed to hold it like that. There is the emotional and the practical. Yeah. <laughs> Catherine? I think that um, I tend to sometimes be very obsessed about loss as opposed to enjoying the moment. And I think that uh, Gabby's obsession about losing her very healthy husband who isn't really going anywhere. It's not real. It's just a, a good reminder for that part of me to you know, be in the moment and be as alive as I can be in the moment and not obsessed with what I'm afraid of. Mm-hmm. How about you? Uh, I'm not sure. I've been sitting here wondering exactly what I've learned from Mac. Uh, It's probably not being afraid of your own strength, Mm. uh, which I think is sometimes I hide from because I'm not a wilting violet person. Uh, And sometimes I will sort of tend to go that way so I don't frighten people. (laughs) So, uh, um, and she doesn't, Mac doesn't. She's out in front Mm -hmm. of who she is. And that's a good thing to remind me of. I feel like these are all things we could all stand to learn. And, and we, as, as audience members, we get to. Uh, how about you? Well, I don't, I don't exactly know what to say because I, I think my feeling is about the, the four of us together and how, uh, how wonderful it is that to, ha- to have in a play something that, that we have in life, these, these people who, who, who we've known for 40 years or 45 years who, who, who have such value because they, they change and they're the same and mm-hmm. we change and we're the same. Uh, still is very different for me, but these people are not and we are not as a, as a group of friends and that's, that's really wonderful mm-hmm. to, to have every night, to have, to have the luxury of having that and sharing that with an audience. It's have great. all of you known each other a long time, or are some of you newer to the, the group? I've known these two. So three of you have... I knew Susan, too, because she, uh, she wrote for a TV show I was on. Uh, right? 30-something. So, yes, a little TV show <laughs> called 30-something. Yeah. yeah. I've actually known everybody. Uh, uh, everybody but Fran. Every, and uh, even Fran. I oh, met Fran, Fran I many Fran years ago in San Francisco. Probably 40 years we ago. Probably, yeah, yes. we didn't, we we didn't really get to know, know each, each other. other. But we did meet. We met, yeah. 
Wow. Yeah, and we did all Catherine know. and I have worked together in Paul. I did one of my good. very first plays in New York with Ellen, Do the Fish, Sass, and Vi. And, and I did one of my very first plays with Emily 35 years ago in Chicago. And I did one of the very first plays of Susan called Cross Country. Uh, mm -hmm. And I remember the play she didn't cast me in also. Uh, and oh. She'll never, <laughs> never forget and that. And Polly and I did a, did a play called Top Girls 35 years right. ago. So, you know. Did you guys get out pictures? Did any of you have pictures from, from that long ago that you? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. And, you, and because photos of the group is such a crucial Yeah, part at the, the end line. they have yeah. the pictures of all everybody when they were Younger. Did you find any so pictures? We had to. to. That's, you, what they, you, that's what they use. What have you together? Oh. oh. No. Does no. anybody no. have any? Susan well, I, I do. Yeah. Catherine and I yeah. definitely uh -huh. do. But that's not um, but useful not part, to no. the end no. of the no. show. No. <laughs> no, no. I just thought for perhaps for dramaturgical reasons. Yes. Uh, um, oh, no. Emily, hmm. what have you taken away? Um, you know, the actors talked about their um, characters and what they've learned. I'm curious as to what you, how you feel you have grown or a specific piece of life advice that you've taken away since beginning this project? Well, I don't know what, I feel a little bit like Ellen. I, I don't know exactly, except that a lot of what I've learned from working so openly with Susan and the cast is that I can trust my instincts. Mm -hmm. That is those things that I have a gut feeling on that I feel are right, that I know are right, and eventually, I'm finding that we're coming to them. So that's a good feeling that after 40 years, I, I know a thing or two. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a nice feeling. Yeah. And it feels a little kind of effortless, which is a nice feeling too. Oh, great. Uh, let's take another question. Hi. Um, so was it a challenge at all to uh, make each character uh, different or have different perspectives or different personalities, and, but yet still be able to get along you know, after all these years? I mean, that was my um, directive to myself. And the only way I would be interested in writing it was to find and discover who the characters c could, be, could be and would be, and that they would be individuals uh, and very different. Um, and they're not modeled uh, very, a, a, on my specific group of people that I've known a long time. Um, they really are a combination of, of, of who who I wanted to write about, and the world I live in right now, the, the, or have lived in, um, you know, and, uh, and whose stories I actually wanted to dip into. Um, as to how they deal with those differences on stage or in the context of, of the play, they, they will have to answer, answer that. But it was fun for me. I love all these positive words that keep coming out. Fun and joy and well, love. It's, it's also very hard to be a writer. I'm just going to say it. Right <laughs> now. Okay. It's, it's, you're, you're all alone, and then you have this opportunity, this amazing moment where your play actually, and it doesn't happen in a moment, let me tell you, but then it, it's, it's on. It's real. It's happening. And it's this, you know, convergence of so many things, but in a way... You know, you have the society, the social aspect now to your life when you were shut away in a room, but actually, they try to get you shut back in that room. <laughs> no, I mean, you have, I'm just saying that once, <laughs> once you have the embodiments of your characters, and once you have the person who puts all of this together, there is a bit of a stepping back, too. Mm -hmm. So, I, you know, you have your difficult moments. I mean, let's not pretend otherwise. All of us do. We struggle in different ways to make this thing, you know, to make this play happen. I think we have time for one more question. Hi. I was wondering, besides each other, what other women do you admire? Good question. <laughs> Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Yes. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'd love to hear that answer from each of you. A woman, other, a woman not sitting on this stage that you admire. We got Emily's. Uh, I have to say, my mother, who is now deceased. But when I, it, as I get older, I am so much more appreciative of the sorts of things she went through when she was my age and younger, because it was a very difficult road to travel as an African American woman in the South. Um, and uh, I, you take those things for granted sometimes. So uh, she's always going, I, I know it's somewhat cliche-ish, but um, 
she's always going to be at the top of my list, I think. Wonderful. Anyone else have a, a woman they want to shout out? There's so many. Yeah, every every woman in politics right now is standing up to what's going yeah. on. Yeah. In, yes. in front the, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The you know, I think the journalists um, in particular and lawyers, people who can make a difference, or at least that's what they're trying to do um, personally. I don't know if this is um, admiration or just so much love for my own mother and father. I'll just throw that in because it really was the two of them. Mm -hmm. they, they just unconditional love and support mm -hmm. and appreciation. Did you want to add something? Uh, I just, I mean, the Brazilian beauty pageant women that instead of giving their measurements, talked about all the women that have been killed that month. Uh, Sita Chattery, who's a friend of mine, who's a garment organizer against all odds in Cambodia. Elizabeth Warren, and all the men that support those women speaking out on all forms of you know, human violence that's going on and having the courage to help stop it. Mm -hmm. I think that there's been such a, a wonderful cross-section of very personal relationships, very public figures, um, and certainly this play is a message of bravery, generosity, uh, the intersections between aging and loving each other and accepting ourselves. Um, I want to, before we close, just congratulate all of you on bringing a work to light that um, may not have uh, been created by any other demographic. <laughs> um, I think so often, um, especially in Hollywood, but, but on stage too, we see women in their 20s paired with men in their 60s, and we see um, stories. It's unfortunate that we don't see more stories uh, written, produced, directed, and performed by women, and I am thrilled that such a thing exists and that it's done in such a beautiful way. So thank all, can, thanks can all. Can I um, you ask so much. The, the, the girl who asked the question about the woman, who is the woman you admire? Who, what, who would be the woman you would admire, that you admire? Um, right now, Senator Maxine Waters. Oh, yeah. right. Maggie Maxi. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Outspoken lady. Strong female energy is the theme. And I know you have to end, but I also say this is uh, my son. My son gives me so much in terms, and he is now a writer, but my son is an element, or a son, in this play. And he just, um, the, the, the love that I... The, the things we share. And so a young man is as important to me as uh, the generation behind me in what can change in the world. I admire you all so much. And I'm, I'm again struck by the through line of love, gratitude, bravery, the permission to be difficult, and <laughs> the element of collaboration that is so present in this work. Um, everyone go see 20th Century Blues. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.